Thanks, Quirky QRP, for making me look as good as I possibly can on camera and for making sure I am adequately caffeinated for this antenna build. Love my coffee. Quirky QRP is responsible for my first HF contact on 10 meters. Shortly after getting my tech license and my 991A, I didn't know what antenna to get. I'm in a HOA. Where could I put an antenna? Let's try the attic. Let's put a slink 10 up there. It got me my first contact on 10 meters. Let's give you a few photos of near finish line so they entice you to stick with this. I am a YouTuber, so everything I do on the workbench gets filmed. I don't know how long it would take to build this start to finish if you weren't filming it, cutting it, moving cameras around, I'm guessing perhaps an hour or less. It really was not an intensive build, it was a simple build. The first thing I do in any build project is gather all of the parts, sort them out, make sure I have all my tools and sufficient time to get what part of the project done that I'm planning on. Coffee and Ham Radios uses some type of special process to make their winder. It's not just basic 3D printing. You'd have to check with them to find out what it is, but it's pretty unique. Being Techco Wire, I'm very familiar with that. That is used on all the HOA Ham radial systems. I'll just go ahead and leave that link in the description so you can see how to make a universal system for all of your portable antennas. That's for grounding. So uh, yeah, there's that uh, mag wire, magnetic wire in my hands. Is that what it is? Is that what it's called? I, it's the least favorite part of any antenna build for me as wrapping the toroid. And that's what we're going to get to once we sort out all of these individual parts. You'll see as we go that I actually customize my build. I put my flare on it. And that's one of the things that the guys over at Coffee and Ham Radio do. They allow for that type of creativity in the way they design their system. So, yep, straighten out your magnetic wire. It is as long as you will need to wrap this toroid eight times and have some leads come out both sides. I think they're recommending you leave about two and a half to three inches before the first bend. So I just go ahead and make that bend and get ready to insert that into the toroid. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to strap it down using this zip tie and that kind of holds it in place as you begin the wrap. Snip the end of that zip tie off to get it out of your way. You're going to have enough of a struggle here as it is. I think if you do these every day or once a week, you become very proficient at it. If you do this once every six months, every time, it's a new challenge all unto its own. Now, don't take that to mean this is impossible. It absolutely is not. You can do this. Just go slow. Every time you complete a wrap, just kind of step back and look at what you've completed. What you need to be asking yourself is, I have to wrap this eight times. Am I getting them evenly spaced so when I'm done, the leads are going to be where I want them? Just visualize it. Do not cross over your wires. Watch as you insert the wires down the core, look down the core as you pull them tight, make sure you do not cross over your wires. And when you get around to the other side and you have eight wraps, everything will be exactly in the place that it needs to be. Take your time, check as you go, you can do this. Strip the enamel off the end of all four wires and check these two. If you have continuity, you are good. Shouldn't have continuity here. Go ahead and take that alligator clip, just move it over. This is just checking for extra measure. We've already proven we're right, but we should have continuity here. And we do. Once we put those two wires together in the middle, we'll have continuity between all three at that point. First, we have to strip off the enamel. Before I begin soldering our wires, I do need to strip the enamel off of all four of these. And I'm going to start all the way back here and strip to the end. I need to wrap this wire around this one and solder. So once I strip all of that enamel away, I'll be able to complete that and do the soldering. And then we're going to be putting some connectors and other soldering here in the end of these two. So let's go strip the enamel off. I use a Dremel. This is just a little tiny sanding drum. And that's what I use to lightly go over the enamel and strip it off the wire. It's time to take those two center wires and wrap 
tightly as you can one around the other i did i think maybe three turns here just think about the fact that you're going to be soldering these two together to complete that contact that's why i say wind it as tight as you can you should refer to the instructions that are provided with the antenna kit as well as follow along with this video then just put this up next to the winder and kind of visualize how things are going to fit in the final product i did read the suggestions prior to starting you might know them as instructions of course that's got me in lots of trouble throughout my life but here i was going at a slow enough pace that i did want to make some modifications to how i really wanted to see how that wrapped toroid fit here on the winder and where it would fit with all the other connectors. And that's why I waited to last to put the connectors on. So let's just get this ground lug on the BNC tightened in the approximate location where I want it. I'm going to feed my ground a little bit differently through that ground lug. It just worked better for me. And then you're going to see me do something different as well, where I'm going to use banana plugs for my connections on both the ground radials as well as the radiating element. I use uh, banana plugs for a lot of my installations and antennas simply because I can always swap out wire. I can always add to, take away from. That's just how I roll. You'll see me do that. You can choose to do the same thing or modify this to your liking what works best for you. Measure twice, cut once. In this case, I'm going to cut twice. I cut this a little bit long, then I match my toroid to where I think it's going to go, then I have to trim it again. You can see the opening where I need to solder onto that BNC is facing up. And then the wire is going to feed right into that opening. We're getting close there. I just inserted it into the opening and that's perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this in place so it stays put while I trim the rest of my wire locations. I go in my mind from hardest to easiest and I feel like this ground side of things will be just a little bit harder. In my mind, I already know what I'm doing with that radiating element. This is the connector I'm using for my banana plug. I'll leave links in the description below for that setup so you could pick up those if you want. They're very high quality connectors. There's the connector that I'm using that I'm going to feed my ground wire through and then take it over to the ground lug on that BNC connector. So let's get these tightened up and you'll see me here in a second with how I'm going to route the ground. Once my hand gets out of the way, you'll see I routed my ground through the ring terminal first and then to the ground lug on the BNC connector. I just fold over and twist that wire on the BNC connector and then I have my two solder points here at the BNC connector ground lug and through that ring terminal. Ground side done, let's go after that radiator, locating it, generally speaking, where I want it. Coffee and Ham Radios does have a very unique feature the way they provide for strain relief with this winder. For me, I'm going to just use a plastic carabiner to pull off my strain relief. I have to add this screw. That's not part of the kit. This is my modification. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use a banana plug radial and a ring terminal, just like I did on the ground side. So I'm putting a ring terminal on that radiating wire coming off of the toroid. And here's my ring terminal that's going to accept my radiating element. Uh, banana plug. So that's how we're going to roll. I'm going to crimp down this ring terminal onto that wire. We're going to solder that up and then we're getting close to being able to fire this thing up. We have four places to solder the radiating ring terminal, the ground ring terminal, where we twisted the two wires together and then on the ground lug on the BNC connector. I go out into the garage to do this because I don't want any fumes inside the shack. I'm going to pull the ring terminal up away from this plastic winder because I don't want any heat transfer down to the winder as much as possible. I learned how to solder by home construction, meaning I sweat joints on copper pipes and then I transferred that knowledge into soldering. You see me put the soldering iron on the far side of the wire, then bring my solder to the opposite side. That makes sure that the heat transfers through all the way on that connector as well as on the wire. And if I can melt my soldering wire on the opposite side of where my soldering iron is, that means my wire's hot enough. And that's just how I roll when I can. I can do that on these two joints that I'm doing first. And on the final joint, you'll see me here in a second on the ring terminal 
where I can't really pull that off. So I do put the soldering iron on the ring terminal. It's touching that copper wire coming through. I crimp these terminals first. So I believe in crimping and soldering. And then I apply the solder as far away as I can from the tip of the soldering iron. Again, I'm trying to make sure that there is plenty of heat so that the solder flows. That's what you want to have happen. Again, the iron is on the underside of the copper wire as well as that terminal. And then I'm bringing the soldering wire from the top side. I'm making sure everything's hot enough so the solder flows. We're going to put the wrap on it now. We're going to shrink it down. And then we have a pretty good looking antenna system. I already told you I use uh, banana plugs. I, I'm just a big fan. And I have looked at just about every banana plug available on Amazon with a decent rating. And I have purchased all of them. And I have thrown away 95% of them. I have settled on this one and this one alone because it is high quality. It lasts for a long period of time. I have yet to destroy these banana plugs even though I use them frequently. So I use premium banana plugs that way they never break or they haven't broken on me yet. I'm using four wires for my grounding system, my radials, and I put all four wires in. You saw me twist them together and there are two screws on that banana plug that torque down on the wire and then it has a cover that screws over top of it. And of course I used black for the grounding side and I'm using red for the radiating side. Now this S-clip that I'm using has three holes in it that will act as my strain relief. Uh, Coffee and Ham Radios, their winder, it does a fantastic job with strain relief. I just am doing something different, but theirs is absolutely adequate. It's pretty ingenious and you should be good to go if you use theirs. I'm using the strain relief that comes here in my clip. That clip then becomes part of the antenna system. Because I'm only putting one wire inside of the radiating element banana plug instead of four wires on the radial side, I'm actually cutting the sheeting back, the covering back extra long, folding this wire over one time so I get some bulk inside when I screw down those two lugs right here where I'm putting the banana plug over top of it. And uh, here we go. Here I am with my radiating element. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Then you'll see me go ahead and get my S-clip on there. And now you will understand what I'm trying to pull off. There are uh, holes that are available on the winder from Coffee and Ham Radios. I'm doing a last minute adjustment here, getting my radiating element as long as I want it there in the strain relief. And there it is. We have a finished product. It's time to go play radio.